Hey all, Sean here from Tesla Family. I've had my Tesla solar panels for two years now and my Tesla Powerwall for one full year. My Powerwall is further offsetting my home's grid demand and providing my family peace of mind that it is ready to power my home in the event of a grid outage. It's been an amazing year and I've got a lot of performance data to share with you. In this video, I'll share with you this past year's solar offset breakdowns of my solar energy destinations, how much energy was charged and discharged through my power wall, my power wall's efficiency, the value of the energy provided by my power wall, and the number of backup events and total time on backup power for this past year. I'll also share with you a fun power wall experiment that I have planned for my next video. All right, let's dig in. All right, here we go. Thanks for joining my Tesla Powerwall one year performance video. Before we get into the numbers, let me share with you a couple other videos that have to do with my solar panels and my Powerwall that you may be interested in viewing after you watch this video. So first up, here's the thumbnail from my second year Tesla solar performance video. I've got a lot of great data in here covering the entire two years with my Tesla solar panels that I celebrated this past summer, 2022. And yes, I'm still saving over $1,000 a year by having Tesla Solar. If you wanna learn how I'm doing that, definitely check out this video here. And if you're interested in my Tesla Powerwall installation, I've got an installation video here. And yes, this was a referral Powerwall. I received it as an award from Tesla for referring 10 new Tesla Solar customers. It's got a fun time lapse of the installation in it. If you want to learn more about how I earn the free power wall, I've got all of those details here in this video. You can find all of these videos on my Tesla solar and power wall playlist, and I'll share with you that link above. Probably one of the coolest features of Tesla power wall is the storm watch mode where your power wall will self charge itself whenever there is hazardous weather on its way. I've got all the details in the storm watch mode and an example of my system going into storm watch mode and, and how it readied my power wall in case my home was to lose power during a winter storm we had. And my very popular six month Tesla power wall performance video. Definitely check this out if you wanna see how my performance was for the first six months. That was during the cold season of 2021 into 2022. And now I'll be sharing with you my one year performance summary. All right, starting out here, we've got the opening slide. If you don't already know, my Tesla solar panel system is a 7.56 kilowatt solar system that was installed back in June of 2020. And I added this single Tesla Powerwall back in late September of 2021. So my first year performance is gonna cover the 12 month period between October 2021 and September 2022. On the left hand side, I'm sharing a couple screenshots from my Tesla app. Both images are showing the impact screen. Now I've got a certain part of the app screen here blacked out on each of these screenshots and we're gonna talk about that a couple slides down in the video. So sit tight for that information. The left image is showing the percentage that my system was self-powered or self-powering my home. And then on the right, we can see my lifetime solar offset. So looking at the table on the right hand side, just to break down the numbers, my system was self-powered. My home was self-powered for 55% of the year from October, 2021 to September, 2022. And that was a 5% increase since my six month video. I generated 9,390 kilowatt hours in that year. My home used 10,760 kilowatt hours, which puts my solar offset at 87%. Now, ideally, if you were to go out and you're interested in purchasing a new solar system and maybe a power wall or two for your home, you would like to have a solar offset of at least 100% or more. And I did have that solar offset. If you view my one year video, which is in my playlist, you'll see that I had more than 100% solar offset for the first year. 
However, we started driving a lot more now that my daughter's in school in the past year. So uh, the driving and charging of my Model 3, yes, I have an electric Tesla Model 3. So charging that has consumed more of my amount of solar that I'm generating and causing my home usage to come up a bit. So 87% solar offset, but that was a 13% increase since the six month video. So that was good there. All right, I'm gonna show you the breakdown now of my lifetime or my one year percentage of where is the solar energy that my home is producing? Where is it going to? And you can get these cool breakdowns from the Tesla app. So for my solar to home, how much energy my solar panels produced and sent directly to my home in the past year was 3,287 kilowatt hours or 35% of my solar generated went straight to power my home. It's down 1% from the six month video. 31% of my solar or 2,911 kilowatt hours went to charging my power wall. So solar collected directly from the sun through my panels and charging my power wall, 31%. No change there from my six month video. And solar to grid, 34% of my solar came into my home and was excess generated. So I didn't need that. It sent pushed back into the grid for some other home to use. And I earn a credit to use those at other times of the year or at nighttime. Whenever I need that credit, I'm able to draw off those credits. So 3,192 kilowatt hours in the past year were solar excess and pushed into the grid. That is an increase of the 1% there from the six month video. Let's talk about how my home was powered. So my home was powered from the combination of solar and power wall. Again, 55% in the past year. That breaks down into around 31% from solar and 24% from power wall. So solar usually powering my home, middle of the day, bright outside, and power wall powering my home during the nighttime period. A lot of times though, when I'm charging my Model 3, my Model 3's battery is over 70 kilowatt hours, so I don't have enough capacity in a single power wall uh, to completely charge my car. So then we're drawing, you know, the balance, which is probably 60 kilowatt hours from the grid. Luckily, a lot of those are credits, though. That is an increase of 5% from my six month video for solar and an increase of 2% for my power wall to home from my six month video. And how much of my home is powered from the grid? It's 45% or 4,842 kilowatt hours. And that is a decrease, which is good. We wanna have less and less of my home being powered by the grid of 7% since the six month video. On the left-hand side, we can see the bar graph showing the years 2021 and 2022 uh, for my solar generation. And the blue indicates the amount of energy with a destination of my home. The green indicates the energy destination of my power wall and gray indicates energy destination from solar to grid. The right hand image showing my home usage. We could see yellow. My home was powered by the sun 31% of the time. Green, my home was powered by power wall 24% of the time and gray being grid powered 45% of the time. Okay, moving on to net grid use and power wall discharge. So I mentioned that any excess solar that I generate after powering my home and charging my power wall goes back into the grid as credits. However, we did have to draw from the grid mostly for charging my Model 3. It's still very cheap. I think I'm only charging my Model 3 for a price of around 13 cents per kilowatt hour, which is half of what it would cost to charge my car at a supercharger. So we can see the net grid usage was 1,720 kilowatt hours. And that difference really is just the difference between my home usage and my solar generated. And that cost was basically how much did it cost me? How much did I pay the electric company for that amount of energy? $286. Now that's the entire year's cost of energy that I'm paying the utility, which I think is fantastic. I used to pay somewhere around my average cost per month before going solar was over $100 per month, about $103 per month. And now the cost, if we just take this 286 divided by 12, 
Now my average cost is somewhere around just $23.80 per month. So that's a pretty substantial discount in having to pay the energy company. How much energy did my Powerwall discharge? 2,590 kilowatt hours. It discharged that energy to power my home and even my Model 3 until it was drained down to the 20% limit that I have it set at. And what's my Powerwall efficiency? Now the Tesla app doesn't show you this, but I calculated my Powerwall efficiency at 89%, meaning that of all the energy that I charge into the Powerwall, I get 89% back, which I guess is pretty good. I'd like to see more than that. And you can see here that that's a decrease of 4% since the six month video. Um, at six months, I was getting back around 93% of what I put into it. I do have a 20% reserve and you can see that 20% reserve in the Tesla app, but you don't see power wall efficiency. Look at the graphs on the left hand side. Blue is how much energy I imported into my home and yellow is how much energy I exported from my home. The image on the right hand side, blue is the amount of energy discharged to my home and yellow being how much energy from solar was charged into my power wall. Taking a look at my one year bill, this is from my electric company's website and you can see here my energy costs uh, you know, as a bar graph over the one year period. The highest costs were obviously during the winter months when my home does not produce as much solar energy, but still less than $100 per month, even in December. And even moving through the uh, spring and summertime with April actually being uh, a month where I didn't even have an electric bill, I actually generated a small credit. And then getting into the heat of the summer there, where we're using more uh, air conditioning and such, very, very small bills, all less than $50 per month. <clears throat> Seeing that the, high, the highest costs were obviously during the winter months when my home does not produce as much solar energy, uh, but still less than $100 per month, even in December. And even moving through the uh, spring and summertime, with April actually being uh, a month where I didn't even have an electric bill, I actually generated a small credit. And then getting into the heat of the summer there, um, where we're using more uh, air conditioning and such, very, very small bills, all less than $50 per month. So where is my home compared to efficient similar homes or just similar homes in my area? I am way lower than them. You can see here, uh, during the winter months, not so much. I'm about even with them. December and January of uh, 2021, 2022. But as soon as we got into February in the spring where my solar panels collect a ton of energy, my highest production is actually in the spring, believe it or not. My home is netting generally close to that zero kilowatt hour mark from February through May. And it ticks up a little bit here, maybe up toward a few hundred during the, uh, the middle of the summer. But other homes, they're over a thousand kilowatt hours per month in the heat of uh, July and August. So I'm doing much better here with uh, Tesla Solar. So thanks to the solar panels and then Powerwall also helping by offsetting my grid requirements in the evening and at night. And finally, let's go back to the original two graphics I showed in the first slide. Uh, what I did actually was I had the energy value and the backup history blacked out because I didn't want to focus on that at that time. All right, talking about energy value. So what is energy value? First off, let's see, Tesla says energy value is an estimate of the money you didn't have to pay to your utility. And this is something for Powerwall owners. So the Tesla app shows you your energy value and for the one year period of having Powerwall is $956. That would have been a cost I would have had to pay the electric company had I not been able to draw from the Powerwall. Now, the credits do kind of change things around because if I wasn't pushing in a power wall, I likely would have generated a higher credit. We still wouldn't have had, had to pay a significant amount of uh, money to the utility company. Tesla showing you here the savings that you are uh, keeping in your pocket by not having to uh, draw a substantial amount from the grid. So $956 from the six month video, that's an increase of $585. Let's talk about backup history because one of the greatest features about Tesla 
power wall is that it serves as a home backup battery for your home. If the grid goes down and everyone in your neighborhood loses power, if you have power wall, your home will be powered by the energy stored in your power wall. So during the one year period, no real significant outages, thankfully. Only, you know, hit and miss a few, five or 10 minutes or so here or there, but a total of 13 backup events, totaling around one hour's total uh, time in that one year. And that's an increase of eight events in 29 minutes from the six month video. I've got a really fun video planned coming up very, very soon. Make sure you're subscribed to Tesla Family Channel if you wanna be notified when I post this video, but I'm going to be comparing the performance of my Powerwall at a 20% backup reserve, which I had set for the entire first year of owning Powerwall. You can see that in the snapshot from my Tesla app on the left. And I've changed that to just having my Powerwall as a 100% backup. I'm gonna be showing you the data from October 2022 to December 2022. And this data is gonna show the difference of having my backup reserve set to 100% backup. Basically what this means is that my power wall used to charge up to 100% and drain 80% down to a 20% backup limit every single day. So charge up, discharge, charge up, discharge. I've set that to 100% backup. So right now my power wall is not being used to power my home at all. It's only being saved for backup. The reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna see how much energy Powerwall actually uses just for general maintenance, you know, cycling and keeping that ideal temperature that it likes to sit at because yes, Powerwall does use some of the energy to keep itself powered. I wanna see exactly how much over a three month period Powerwall is using just to maintain itself, not even to power my home. So definitely subscribe. If you wanna see that video, it should be pretty neat with a lot of really cool data. Thanks for watching the video. If you really liked it, make sure to subscribe to Tesla Family Channel for free here on YouTube. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and everyone who watches our videos. If you have a question, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you soon. Check out all of our other videos and playlists. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Use my referral link when you order Tesla products like Tesla solar roof or solar panels or vehicles, and you can earn credits upon activation of your solar system or delivery of your vehicle that you can redeem for awards in the Tesla referral shop.